What's up guys, Sailor here, and we're back with another rare mount guide. This is going to be a guide on how to get both the Blue Drake and the Azure Drake. Um, if you remember, the Blue Drake came from the Oculus. You run through the Oculus, you get a bag, and the bag had a chance of the Drake. That doesn't happen anymore because people don't do Oculus. So the Blue Drake comes from the Satchels of Exotic Mystery, but along with that it comes from uh, Malagos 10 and 25, along with the Azure Drake. So this guide's going to be showing you how to solo Malagos for a chance for the Drake. So, to find Malagos, you want to, it's a raid, so we need to be in a raid group first of all, and you want to head to Burian Tundra, and to Kuldara in Northrend, and then to the Nexus, and it's a top portal in the Nexus that we want. Make sure you're on 10 man difficulty if you don't know how to do that, right click in your unit frames, go down to dungeon, uh, raid difficulty, and set it to 10 player. So once inside, there's no trash, you just need to click the focus in Iris in the centre, that'll pee Malagos off and you'll begin the fight. So phase 1 goes down to 50% and he's not really going to do too much damage to you here if you're level 90 and um, you won't really need to worry about the damage too much. Just for yourself an occasional heal and you should be fine. Um, but during this phase he'll uh, occasionally pick you up and put you in like a tornado where you, it'll do a bit of damage and you won't really be able to do anything. It doesn't tick for much as you can see it's hitting me for 2k per tick, nothing to worry about at all. And then we'll get down to nearly 50%. Now 50% is when he starts doing his transition. For that bit, I'd recommend saving any ranged abilities you have. So for example, as Enhance, I'll save Ascendance. As Rhett, I'll save Wings. You know, just anything that gives you ranged capabilities. So as you see, he's gone down to 50%. I pop Ascendance, and it allows me to get that extra damage off on him. Um, just, you know, to bring him down as low as possible. Because the lower you can get him now, the less HP you need to kill in the final phase. So now he's transitioned and we're into phase 2. You'll see these guys flying around on the discs and we need to kill all of these to, fan uh, to, to get the boss to transition into phase 3. Now to do that just kill one of them, there'll be one on the ground and then you'll be able to jump onto the disc that he leaves and that'll allow you to fly around. Now you should also get an achievement for this as well for killing one of the mobs um, while on a disc so grats. Now this fight's very hard for melee um, in general. If you're a melee, you're probably going to struggle. Most range can get him down to around 10% now because the range and they, they can like do 40% to him while he's in the air. Melee struggle because we don't have many ranged abilities so we have to just do what we can. So as a melee you might struggle to solo this, you might have to bring in a friend. But as range you shouldn't have any issues with this. So now we've just, uh, killed all the guys, we'll be on the, uh, the drakes, this is phase 3. And this is the probably the harder part to solo. So to solo this bit, what I recommend doing is first of all always keeping your heal on five stacks. By doing that just before he's in combat again, just spam the heal until you get five stacks of it, and just try and keep it up as much as possible. And then what I reckon uh, recommend doing is using your first ability three times, as you can see it builds up combo points. Using it three times, building up three combo points, and then using your second ability. What the second ability does is puts a, a stacking debuff on him which will increase the damage he takes. So you definitely want to do that. and um, You want to try and stack that as high as possible because the higher you can get it the quicker the fight will be over. And the reason I say stack it to 3 is because it gives you enough time to be able to refresh your heal and refresh the dot. Now one thing you need to take note of as well is the further away you are the longer it takes to refresh the dot. That's because your drake fires it out of its mouth and it does have like a couple of second delay to actually hit the boss. So the closer you are, the, clo uh, the quicker it will refresh. So you want to always try and refresh that and always keep your heal up and that will give you enough survivability to get through this fight. And as you can see, it also does this focusing on you. You can use combo points to use the shield, which is the fifth ability, but I wouldn't really recommend that. And don't be too close to the boss because you'll get these orbs spawn right on top of you and they'll do a hell of a lot of damage. So you want to find the perfect range, as you can see I'm at a, a good enough range at the moment where I'm not too far, I'm not too close, and I can just kind of keep good space away from him and the, the discs or the, the orbs. And I'm always keeping up the, the three um, combo points and then refreshing my stack when it's sort of halfway. As you can see I'm stacking it pretty high and the boss is starting to drop fairly quickly now, his, his HP is really starting to plummet, which makes this a, a lot easier. Um, so you definitely want to stack that as high as possible, otherwise you probably won't kill this. He does have an enrage timer, so if you take too long, he will enrage and kill you. So definitely keep up the 5 stacks of heal, and definitely stack your debuff as high as possible. And then he'll die! So, 
as I said, this is going to be quite a tough challenge for anyone wanting to solo. It's really not easy, so you will probably need to take a couple of attempts, especially to get used to Phase 3. Phase 3 is the part that's going to kill you off the most. So, just give it a go. Hopefully you'll be able to kill it, and then you'll have a chance on getting the blue and the Azor Drake from Malagos 10. Uh, the drop rate seems to be roughly 4%. Um, not too sure on both the Drakes as Wowhead only lists one of them, but I'd imagine they're both around the same drop chance. Maybe the blue drake having a slightly higher drop chance than the Azur. Azur, or whatever you want to call it. But thanks for watching guys, good luck on Solo and Maligos.